Out of that fills you with nightmares about range anxiety and charging points, then stick around and let's see if the Zoe's good points outweigh its limitations. To begin with, let's consider how practical the Zoe is. Noting first of all, it comes with five doors as standard, unlike a lot of small cars. And the battery is packed under the seats, resulting in quite a large boot for such a small car. Perfect for this large suitcase, or perhaps a baby buggy. However, this backrest, while folding down, creates more space. It doesn't fold flat and it doesn't split 60-40. In the back, there's room for two adults, although legroom will be a squeeze for taller passengers. Up here in the front, there are plenty of places to store your everyday clutter, including cup holders, storage here, a little shelf here, and decent sized door bins. The dash is neat and futuristic, complete with this touch screen showing essential vehicle information such as battery life. Talking of which, let's go for a drive. But not before I give you a score for practicality, for which the Zoe scores 8 out of 10. There are two things that immediately hit you when you first drive the Zoe. One is how high up you sit, and that's thanks to the batteries being underneath the seat. And the second is how quiet it is. Now, considering the Zoe will mainly be driven in towns and cities, both are real bonuses because you get a fantastic view of the road and the peace and quiet gives a real sensation of relaxation. Performance is good from a standing start because that electric motor gives its all from zero revs. However, one criticism I do have is take it onto the open road and it soon runs out of puff. You can really feel that electric motor only pushes out 87 brake horsepower. As for 0 to 60 times, 13 and a half seconds. Hardly stuff dreams are made of. Well, not my dreams anyway. The regenerative braking also takes some getting used to, the system harvesting power to feed back into the battery to maximise range, which can make the car feel quite jerky when you slow down. Ah yes, range. Renault says it would do 130 miles on a full charge. From our experience, it's more like 80. At least you'll be having fun though, because the Zoe handles really well. That's thanks to partly because the weight of the batteries is so low down and when you turn into corners there's a really good response. True, the ride can be a bit fidgety when you're going quickly, but all in all the Zoe offers a refreshingly different Now, we realise that your time is very important, so we're going to cut straight to the point. The new Renault Clio is one of the best, if not the best, small cars money can buy. So, instead of driving around and talking about it, I'm going to go to the pub. Unfortunately, the director says that you can't do a full car review in less than 20 seconds, and that I need to elaborate just a little bit more. So, let's take a closer look at the new Clio. The first thing to mention about the Glacis Clio is it's available as a five door only. But while this is great for practicality, it also means that there's no sporty three door model in the range. Renault has solved this problem with these clever door handles, which mean that while the Clio might have the usability of a dumpy five door hatch, it looks like a three door coupe. And from every angle, the Clio just looks so cool and distinctive. Park it next to a Polo or a Fiesta or a Vauxhall Corsa and the difference is obvious. It is, no arguments please, the best looking small car around. While the inside of the Clio is every bit as good looking as the outside, what really impresses you is the kit. The Clio's party piece is this, the R-Link system, a 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system which is stuffed with amazing features. It comes with all the usual stuff, so you've got Bluetooth, USB, voice recognition, a TomTom sat-nav and, if you want it, a reversing camera. You can even watch photos and videos backed through the screen, while stationary of course. 
but the absolute best thing about it is the R sound effect app, which lets you choose from a range of engine noises which are played back through the stereo speaker. So you can make your car sound like a motorbike, a Clio V6, a Laguna for some reason, and I'm not making this up, a spaceship. Now, I'm sorry, is that not the best thing fitted to a car ever? Honestly, if you don't want to buy a Renault Clio after this, then frankly, it's your fault, not the car. There's more good news when you take the Clio out onto the open road. It just feels so alive, and it manages to feel both sporty to drive and comfortable, and it's rare to find that combination in a car. And although it's not quite as good to drive as a Ford Fiesta, it's